What's up everybody, Ian here, and today we are talking over FAI, femoral acetabulum impingement, um, pinching in the hips, um, hip impingement in general. First thing that we're gonna do in this video is really give you a good visual of what's happening at the pelvis and the femur. So that way when we give you our exercises and when you go towards your approach of improving this stuff, you're able to really take this visual and understand it and get some of the details a little bit better, especially about your positioning. So first, what is it? So when people flex their hip, so think about bringing their knee towards their chest, we'll get a pinch in the front of the hip. It'll kind of feel like a bone is touching another bone or like certain tissues are getting compressed, squeezed, pinched. A pinch is a pretty specific feeling. You should know it when you feel it. And it's always gonna be on the closing side of the joint. Meaning when I lift my knee up, this angle is getting closed, it's down. So it's getting closer together and the backside is stretching. If I feel my butt stretching here, my hamstring, anything in the back here, then that's good. It's supposed to, it's lengthening. If I feel something in the front here, besides a hip flexor working like a pinch, that's not what we want. This issue is often um, assessed by also doing internal rotation. So think about bringing this out and then feeling a pinch on the groin. So that's exactly how you're gonna kind of recognize this. Obviously you'll need imaging to really look at the different things that we'll talk about in our blog, about the head of the femur and all these different kind of diagnoses there. What I will say about the surgery type of thing is you can't redo a surgery and you still always have to do rehab after a surgery. So in general, doing what you can first and seeing if it completely relieves everything is the number one path. And the research will even support that. You'll read more about that in our blog. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing that I want you to really understand is the position of your pelvis. So just think these bones right here. So this is the femur, this is the pelvis. This relationship is huge. We can think about it as space. If you have a pelvis and a spine that's really tipped forward all the time, which would be like you being hyper extended like this, you're putting yourself in a position to close down the space at the front of the hip, which would mean if I do this all the time, I'm gonna get stuck way earlier. So the position of your pelvis could be the number one reason you're getting a pinch at the hip. Now, in order to change that, first we wanna think about it in the sagittal plane, which is really just thinking if it's extended, I wanna just be able to bring it back a little bit just to change the start position, not to be here forever. But if I get into an exercise, like a hip mobility exercise, and I'm starting off here, I definitely wanna learn how to exhale, learn how to bring my pelvis back and gain control of my hamstring. So sagittal plane, that's the first thing. Now, the other thing that you'll often see in a squat is when I go down to a squat, you'll see someone that completely goes away from one side or one hip and that's usually the hip that's pinching. If you don't have internal rotation, you're not gonna get down into a squat very well and you'll often shift away. So think about the pelvis. If I can't get this motion to happen, I might turn and go away from it to open up the space here. You can see why that's so important. So that's another way to think about it is you might be just completely turned one way as you go down to your squat and that would require some stuff to really get them to open up both sides. You can see Pelvic Magic is, has a ton of that stuff, which is, um, there's a free class on YouTube you can start with. Now, the other thing to consider, which is what most people really focus on, is the femur, okay? So we need this to be able to rotate in, we need this to be able to rotate out. You can see there's a distance where all these muscles are in here, all this tissue, and we don't wanna have that closed down. So if you're starting off, especially in the left hip, with it completely turned inward like this, you're gonna see that there's not a lot of space there. So learning how to internally and externally rotate and start in a position that promotes space in that area would be really, really important, which is where our cars come in, going through that full range of motion, staying away from the pinch. So something as simple as I get a pinch above 90 degrees. Well, guess what? work really long and hard and consistently just below 90 degrees. Next thing you know, you have 110. So that's a good way of thinking about that. So just to recap everything, the position of your pelvis is gonna play a huge role in any pinching at the femur at the hip. The position and the options that you have at the femur are also going to be a huge part of getting that. 
something as simple as when you're working on our sideline hip IR series that we're going to have in our blog, it's going to be part of the part two of this. If you're getting a pinch when you come in adduction and the hip goes across, well, just put a bigger block in between your knees and now you're not getting that pinch and you have more space to work with. So simple strategies like that are exactly what we're talking about. Um, using our pelvic magic stuff to get the pelvis moving left, right, up, down, in every direction is also going to free up movement and identify where you need it the most. So if you have any questions about that, please put it in the comments below. Check out the part two. Check out the full blog. We're giving it to you guys all here in detail. If you're a personal trainer, physical therapist, strength coach, and you want to learn more about this and how we go through the entire process with our clients and athletes, definitely check out Mobility Coach Plus.